Hi folks, I'm The Lost Mapper, and in this video I'll be showing you the basics of working with line layers in QGIS. We'll be going over when to use line layers, how to create a line layer, how to add, edit, move, and delete lines, and some basic styling of line layers. So if we take another look at this Yosemite Park map, we can see a few places where using lines makes sense. So the trails throughout the park make sense. The roads make sense. And the creeks make sense. These are all things that have a, a constant width, and we're worried just about the direction that it's going. Something like the river might not be good for lines because the width changes throughout its uh, distance. So lines are good for things like roads, trails, creeks, and other things like perhaps fences or electrical lines or sewer systems. Anything where the data associated with the feature is about the line itself and not the you know, vertexes along the way or perhaps the area that it encloses. It's about the line itself. For this video, I'm gonna continue working on the map of scary places from the previous episode about points. And I'm gonna use a line layer to catalog some switchback roads and steep trails around the area I live in. You can learn about project setup and adding Google Maps in my video, Getting Started with QGIS and Adding Google Maps to QGIS. Before we get started, I wanna do a little bit of due diligence. Uh, right now the map is called Point Layers and maybe we should call it Scary Places instead. So I'm gonna go up to Project and choose Properties. And I'm gonna change the project title to Scary Places. And click OK. And then the other thing I'm gonna do is head up to Project Menu and choose Save As. And I wanna save it with a new name. I'm gonna keep it in the same folder for now, but let's call this Scary Places. So what we have so far is a map with a bunch of points on it for Scary Places. And what I'd like to do is add a line layer that highlights some of the roads and trails that I find intimidating. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually shut off the points layer. And then I'm gonna head up to layer and choose create layer. And I'm gonna make a new geo package layer. And I'm gonna click the three dots next to database and make sure I'm in the right project folder. And I'm gonna call this uh, scary lines and click save. The geometry type, I'm going to choose line string. Um, for lines, you have four options here. There's line string, which means each feature is a single line. There's multi-line, which means a feature can actually consist of multiple lines. So an example of that might be a, a road where it, when it crosses another road, it's at one location, but continues at another location. Uh, another example might be Maybe you have a road where there was a bridge and that bridge, you know, crumbled. And now there's two sides of that, that road. There's still represented by two lines. There's just a break in the middle. The other two are compound curve and multi-curve. I have not worked with these a lot. And I believe they're maybe a little, little bit newer than the line and multi-line geometry types. So I'm not sure that they're as well supported just based on some things that I've read. So for now, I'm gonna choose line string. Similar to point layers, you can include a Z dimension, which would be elevation, and you can include M values, which are some type of measurement associated with each segment. For now, we're gonna leave those disabled. We're gonna leave the coordinate reference system as is, and I'm gonna add a few fields. So I'm gonna add a name. I'm going to add a severity like we did for the points. And then one more thing I'm gonna capture here is a type as a string. And that's gonna represent whether or not, whether it's a road or whether it's a trail. So I'm gonna add that one as well and click okay. So now that we have a line layer, we can start adding lines to it. So what I'm gonna do is temporarily turn on my scary places layer and I'm gonna zoom into a location that I know has a road. So down here by Rocky Lane. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. I'm gonna turn off that Scary Places 
layer. Now I've got my line layer selected. I'm gonna come up to the digitizing toolbar and I'm gonna to toggle on editing. And then I'm going to click this add line feature button. And I've got my crosshair and I can start laying down a series of vertices that are connected by lines. Now, in this case, I'm not worried about being too uh, precise. I just kind of want to represent these roads. And in fact, probably the better way to do this would be to actually download or get this data and then select it and trim it. Uh, but this is really just to show you how to, to make lines. So I'm, I've clicked once at the start and I just keep clicking to add more vertices to draw this line. And let's get to the end here. This is a very long switchback road. It goes up pretty high in my opinion. And what I'm gonna do is we'll actually come back in here and add some vertices along the way. All right, so I've added this last point and once I'm at the end, I can right click to finish. I'm going to name this Rocky Lane. I'm gonna give this a severity of seven and the type, I'm just gonna type in road. And then why don't we make this a little bit easier to see, double click on the layer, head into symbology, and I'm going to use one of the pre-made styles. Let's just use topo main road. Okay, so now, we've, now we can see that really well. So now that we have this line in place, I'm gonna head up to the digitizing toolbar and click save. And there's a few ways that we can edit this line. So if in this toolbar, we click on the vertex tool, we can start to navigate around this line and see different ways that we can interact with it. So one thing we can do is if we click on any vertex, we then have the ability to move and adjust where that is. So click once to select it, click again to place it. Click once to select it, click again to place it. So that's what happens when I hover over a, a vertex. If I move to a place between a line, you can see a little plus sign shows up. Actually, maybe in order to make that show up a little bit better, I will change the color of my line. I'll make this blue. Okay, and now you can see that red a little bit better. So if I click on the plus sign, it gives me the ability to add a point at a vertex in between two different vertices. So I can use that to sort of round out this road a little bit more. I click on that plus sign and I can adjust. Add a couple more here. I'm gonna adjust this one and then move this point. A third thing you can do is move an entire section of a line. So we've hovered over the vertex, we've hovered over the plus sign in the middle. If you hover over the line itself and click, you can then move the entire line. So this might be, be, be good if you made a bit of a mistake. Another thing we can do is delete vertices along a line. So let's, I'm gonna make an extra one here. So I'm gonna split this one and put a point out here. Now, let's say that that was a mistake and I wanted to delete it. I can click on the vertices and I have the option to move it. I could move it back. But if I press the delete key, it will get rid of it. So that vertex no longer exists there. I should add that during any of these operations, so if I was moving a point and I decided I didn't want to move it, I can hit escape to cancel. The same thing with adding a vertex. If I click and go to add it and I hit escape, I will undo it. And if I try to move the entire segment and I hit escape, I will cancel out of that operation as well. So I've gone ahead and I digitized a few more roads in the area. And I realized as I was doing this two things, one at this scale, it looks kind of blobby. And two, uh, I haven't digitized any trails, but I have noticed a difference between uh, some roads are paved and some roads are gravel. So I think instead of the type representing uh, whether or not it's a road or a trail, 
I'm going to replace that with a field that represents the surface. So what we can do is we can go up to our project home and open up scary lines and open up the fields. And I want to make sure that edit mode is on. I'm actually going to save all the changes I've made so far. I'm going to make sure I'm, I'm in edit mode and I can right click on the type field and choose delete field and that will get rid of it. And why don't I also open up the attribute table here and dock it so we can see the entries. And if I hit refresh here, actually if I toggle off editing and hit refresh, the type goes away. Okay, fantastic. Uh, and then if I hit edit again and I choose new field, I'm going to make a new entry called surface and that will be a string. And I think we can leave everything else as is. And then I'm going to fill these in with what they are. Uh, so these are gravel and paved. Paved, and this is gravel. And I'm gonna save those changes and disable editing. All right, let's turn off the point layer again. And at this scale, some of these look a little bit odd. So what I think I'm gonna do is, we can actually change the width of these from two to one, and we can see that that looks a little bit better. The other thing I can show you is, when we're editing this symbology, it's kind of hard to see your changes because we have this dialog box in front of us and our, you know, lines are behind it. So instead of using this method, what you can do is head up to the view menu and go to panels. And there's one called layer styling, which opens up all that styling information over here in its own panel on the right. So that makes things a bit easier to see. And then what we're gonna do is instead of using a single symbol, we're gonna use categorized again. And we're gonna use that surface field that we just introduced. We're gonna hit classify, and now we'll see that there's gravel and paved. And why don't we make gravel a light gray color? Let's see, what do we got here? Let's use this one. And we'll make them this gray color and hit apply and head back. And then we'll do something similar for paved. Let's make this a darker gray. And why don't we also go back to the gravel and make this a dotted line. Now the nice thing is we can see all these changes as we're making them. It's still a little bit hard to see at this level. I open this up a bit. And we can see we've got our paved roads in dark gray and then our gravel ones in this sort of dashed light gray color. And now that I'm done styling things, I can close this panel either by hitting the X or going up to view panels and unchecking layer, layer styling. And another option is to right click on any of the toolbars and you'll get both a panel list and a toolbar list that you can toggle these things on and off. So I'm gonna use this one to turn off layer styling. Last thing I wanna show you is deleting lines. So this is similar to points. I'm going to right click on the line layer and open up the attribute table and click this button to dock it again. And I have the ability to select features by clicking on their entry in the table. And I actually want to delete once again, this Doherty Gap Road. I'm gonna select it. I'm going to enable editing and I can either click the delete, delete selected feature here in the attribute table, or I can use the one up here in the digitizing toolbar. It's going to ask me to confirm and I will delete that one feature.
Then I make sure to save and disable uh, editing. So that should give you the basics of working with lines and line layers in QGIS. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on the video. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. In next week's episode, we'll be covering the third type of vector layer, polygons. See you then.